run the timeline seeker here. You can still see the problem of ground level and mismatching lines. That means work needs to be done inside the feet symbol. Double click on the feet symbol to enter it. As per our process, first insert a keyframe on the 10th frame of both the layers. Let's see the result. Exit the symbol by double clicking in the empty space. Note that when you wish to check the result, come back to the boy symbol. That's where the final animation is reflected. Drag the timeline seeker slowly back and forth. This looks good. At the same time, observe a serious cut in the left leg on the 10th frame. Let's resolve this immediately. While you're on the 10th frame, double click on the left leg. Once inside, select the 10th frame on all layers and press F6 to add keyframes. Now, select the calf symbol and match it with the thigh symbol. Check if there are any rough cuts left out and edit them at this point. Run the timeline seeker to check if the left leg is moving all right on all the other frames. Move the symbols so they work smoothly. And exit the symbol to come back to the boy symbol. Recheck the animation by dragging the timeline seeker back and forth. Do this very slowly so you can easily see what is happening on each frame. You will find that around the 16th frame, again the heel of the left foot is going below the ground level guideline. Let's again create the in-between keyframes here. Select the 16th frame on all layers and press F6. Zoom in for a better view. Select the left leg symbol. With the up arrow keys, Push the leg so the heel settles on the ground level. Exit the left leg symbol. Run the timeline seeker again slowly, frame by frame. Observe the animation as many times as you think necessary to find out the errors in animation. Carefully see the animation of the right leg on the 16th frame. There is some issue here again. Select the left leg and move it up so that the foot settles at the ground level guide. Enter the symbol by double clicking it. Select the 16th frame on the three symbol layers and press F6. Select the calf symbol and skew it a bit so it covers the shoes as in the original design. Make sure you are not tempering with the proportions when you use the free transform tool. Using the free transform tool, Move and rotate the foot symbol and bring it closer to the ground level. Exit the symbol. Check the result by dragging the timeline seeker. Let's enter the right leg symbol once more. And edit the right foot. Select the 16th frame and press F6 to create keyframes on both the layers. 
zoom in to the foot symbol to spot the mismatch of the sole of the shoes. With the free transform tool, skew it to match the heel part with the toe. Exit the symbols to come to the boy symbol again. Use the timeline to see if the animation appears satisfactory. It's looking good. On we go. Let's create the last in-between keyframe now. Select the 22nd frame on all the layers and press F6 to add keyframes. Zoom into the lower body of the character. Observe that the left leg is below the ground level. As before, select the left leg and push it a little above the ground level guide. Let's repeat the same for the last keyframe. Go to the 25th frame, select the left leg and push it up a few notches above the ground level. Before we move to the right leg, let's ensure the left leg is on the higher position on all keyframes. One by one, check all keyframes and use the arrow keys on your keyboard to make the required changes. Ok, let's again run the timeline seeker. On the 10th frame, the left leg is rotating in a little odd way. With the free transform tool, rotate it to the required degree. This will give the feeling of the stretching of the left leg forward. Now back to the 22nd keyframe. You can clearly detect the mismatch between the thigh, calf and foot symbols of the right leg here. The rotation too isn't enough. With the free transform tool, rotate it a bit so it comes forward. Now, enter the symbol. Select the 22nd frame on all layers and press F6 so you can edit the shape and position. As usual, make the required changes to keep the design intact. Exit the symbol after you are done. After working on the lower body, we'll now turn to the upper body. Drag the timeline seeker many times over to see if any more corrections are required. Observe each frame in super slow motion. Note that the character is bending too much at the beginning. Also see that the straightening and bending of the upper body is also not very smooth. If you go over the animation frame by frame, you will see that in some frames the character appears too stiff. So, how to remedy this? Let's fix the mistakes in the upper body first. Watch very closely. The problem is with the keyframes. So, it's natural that you need to delete a few keyframes. Remember that the upper body movements are only two. Bending forward and a slight bend backward. The hand movements are also two. Left and right hands swinging forward and backward. And then swinging in the opposite directions. Observe, that is why the first the 13th and the 25th frames are simply each other's clones. So how do we go about it? Make the job simple. Work only on the first step. That is, from the frame number 1 to frame number 7. Later, all you do is simply copy and paste. As we want only two keyframes to work with, we'll remove the in-between keyframe. Select the fourth keyframe from the upper body parts. That is, the right hand, the head, the t-shirt, the neck and the left hand and remove them by pressing shift plus F6. Now to the first frame. Here, the character is bending forward too much. On the first frame, select all the upper body parts. Now, select the free transform tool and slightly reduce the forward bend. Now, as we discussed before, the first, 13th and 25th frames are clones. So, Copy the first keyframe onto the 13th and 25th keyframes, holding down the control key and select the upper body parts. Now hold down the Alt key, drag the selection and drop it onto the 13th frame. the 13th keyframe. The left leg comes forward. So, the right hand should come forward too. Select the right hand and rotate it. So, it comes forward. Move it to the required position.
Now press the enter key to play your animation. Watch it a number of times concentrating on a single body part at a time. You will see that after the several rounds of corrections, the character is now walking smoothly. It has got a life of its own now. Alright, let's make the character a bit stylish. In this part, we'll work inside the head symbol. Note that when we walk, along with our head, our hair also slightly move up and down. Let's try to get the effect with our character. For this, double click the head symbol and enter it. In order to animate parts of the head symbol, you need to add frames to it. So, select the 25th frame on all the layers and press F5 to insert frames. Now, double click on the first keyframe of the hair symbol. Here too, click on the 25th frame and press F5 to add frames. Let's say you want to animate the two tufts of hair in the front. Let's separate it from the main hair part. Let's see how to do this. Select the line tool and draw a line that separates the two tufts of hair from the rest of the hair body. Switch on the snap tool 